Hello everyone, welcome to Sunburned Albano gives his final thoughts on Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. I'm just, this is me waking up in the classroom for the first time. I continued the epilogue and it just starts the game over apparently. So, I have, this isn't scripted, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do for this, but I have talking points on this document, and there's like 20 of them. So, I don't know, maybe this is gonna be a long video. Um... Yeah, also please no spoilers regarding the plot of future games when I'm... Because uh, after this, I'd love, you know, in the comment section after you're done watching this, you can ask me anything related to Danganronpa, like thoughts, just like, you know, like, who's your favorite character or whatever. Things of that nature that I don't answer in this video, and I will answer them. So just treat it like an AMA on Reddit, only it's not on Reddit, it's on somewhere where people will actually ask me questions. Um, yeah. But again, no spoilers of future games, because obviously I haven't played Danganronpa 2 yet, even though I am going to start. I'm recording this the day that episode 22 has gone up, but I'm done with the game now. So, obviously I will not upload this until after the entire series is up. Anyway, uh, first talking point, the game is incredible, right? This is a really good, it's a really engaging, in-depth story game. Uh, it, you care about the characters, the plot is consistently very surprising, especially I was surprised with just how the cases kept me guessing. But I think there was, there wasn't a single case where I was like, oh, right off the bat, I know what happened. They, they put in so many different twists and turns, nothing was as it seemed right, right away. And uh, the character development, how this situation turns these people into you know, the people that they have to be in order to try to graduate. Which brings me to uh, my next talking point, which is the situation is understatedly tragic. Uh, I know the ending of my series didn't end very well in terms of, like, commentary. Like, I didn't give any sort of final anything, so that's why this video exists. I didn't really give any, any of my thoughts about what happened. So, as they were going at the end of the class trial, Junko reveals herself and whatnot. And she's talking about why she did it. I was really, really enthralled with exactly what she was talking about when it came to creating the ultimate despair out of the ultimate hope. So, like, obviously our situation, we were all classmates, we were all best friends for, uh, like, two years, right? And then the tragedy happened in the middle of that, and then we just kind of, you know, we'd signed up to go there, we were all friends, we were the best class and whatnot. And so, we're, and then to have our memories taken from us, and then just sort of turn on each other and get suspicious, because we don't know these people, but we do, because they're our best friends, this is our class. We were basically inseparable, if you could see from the group photos, everybody was having a great time, everybody seemed to get along, there were a couple of distant people, you know, such as probably Junko and Mukuro, who had the, this plan the whole time, but... Yeah, it's really tragic that things the way ended up the way they were. Uh, there's there will be more on that next next thing. Junko is a freak. That's something I wrote down. But what a fun voiceover role. That's like the role of a lifetime. If you're a voice in an anime, like even it, it not that it's particularly like lengthy or anything, but just like being able to do like five different voices and changing. She's even worse than Genocide Jill. Because she's just bored of it, right? Like, Genocide Jill's pathological, I, you know, crazy. But Junko doesn't really seem to have any sort of mental problems. She just, it, it, aside from incurable boredom. So she even goes so far as to change her personalities. Because she doesn't have multiple personality disorders. She just gets bored of how she is, so she becomes somebody else. Just right in the middle of the conversation. And that is fucking wacky. And also, I love that so much. I want to incorporate that into my life somehow. I want to do that now. Like, I'm just like, oh, hello, everyone. Welcome to some better now by no place. Danganronpa. And then just like, just be a different person. Why be one person when you could be so many other people? Um, but yeah. And the, the fact that we've all been fighting this whole time to graduate, to escape, into a devastated post-apocalyptic world where we will surely die anyway. Just like this whole time we've been clawing so desperately 
from trying to leave Sanctuary and enter Hell, essentially. So that's just... I feel like they really do a, a tremendous job. That's my dog barking, don't worry about it. Like, I, th I feel like Junko's plan more or less succeeded. She created the ultimate despair, I think, pretty inarguably. It was the best way to go about it. I, I can't even wrap my brain around exactly the level of uh, just despair that you would have to feel being in this situation. Like, you feel like you won after you kill her. Cause like, hey, we can finally escape, but oh, this whole world that we thought is gone now. And are we really even better off out there? So then they had that whole trial version of where everybody had the dots and you had to blast the dots with hope. And be like, well, no matter what, we have to try and make it out there. And everybody acts like when the door opens that they're going into some paradise. Like, they act like, oh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a donut shop. Like, bitch, there aren't any donuts left. There's not, not, not at all. And then they're all going their separate ways for some reason, which that should, no, you guys need to stick together now. You've been bonded for life. You've got to maintain this. If the world really is as dangerous, there's gonna be strength in numbers, right? It's like if The Walking Dead, if you, like, if this happened, and then the world out there was The Walking Dead, there were zombies and it was post-apocalyptic that way, you wouldn't all split up and be like, well, see you later. You would, you have to form a group now. You guys are in it forever at this point. So, there's that, what, oh yeah. Mukuro's fate is really unfortunate. I feel like, like, she's the ultimate soldier, It's and she just died straight away for basically no reason. It's kind of like in Far Cry 3 at the beginning, where, like, you're, you know, you're at the island with your friends, and then you get attacked or whatever, but your brother's, like, this big, strong marine, so you're like, oh, well, as long as he's around, I'm safe, but then he dies, like, five minutes into the intro scene, so you're like, oh, shit, I'm on my own. It's... Like, Mukuro... seems like... I don't know... I've, I, her character was uh, unfortunately unexplored, you know? Which I, I guess is the point, but she just strikes me as too interesting to have been discarded in such a way, which I guess speaks to Junko's level of apathy. So, I don't know. I, I would like to see like any, some kind of backstory on her, any sort of thing that way. But yeah. And then, okay, the next point is that Aoi is best girl. Makoto and Aoi ship. Uh, but don't forget, Aoi tried to kill all of us. So, you know, I went I went into this game with like, oh, you know, Sayaka's bae, because they want you to think that, because they're gonna rip her away from you. So they want you to become enthralled with her, and I did at first. I fell hook, line, and sinker for it, and then I got devastated very early on. And then... But as I keep playing, the more I play, the more Sayaka becomes nothing more than an afterthought to me. I don't, I don't really care about her the way that I've cared about these other people that I've forged more alive friendships with, you know, because they survived. And it's, even if she had lived, I don't know what else they would have done with her. So, also let's not forget the fact that Sayaka um, betrayed us. I'm, that's a separate talking point, but I guess we're gonna get to that now. You know? And it wasn't all the way. It wasn't like she approached me right out of the gate and was like, this is gonna be the guy that I frame. You know, that was genuine at first. They went to the same middle school. Maybe she did, in fact, actually like him or whatnot. But then, as those feelings would have been getting explored in any normal situation, you had to deal with the stress of the actual circumstances. So... There was never a time for her to really explore her feelings. Instead, she had to view Makoto as a tool to possibly get out and see her family again. Or like her singing family. Because it's like, you know, Makoto's nice and maybe they would have worked out. And she would have to think that way. But she also th has to think about like, is this dude that I just met more important than my entire vocal group like of course not you have to make you have to make a sacrifice you have to cut somebody loose so i don't necessarily blame sayaka for betraying me but at the same you know but it's like even though i shouldn't logically like i still like her less because she did it even though kyoko said at the end like she you know she wasn't sure of it she was hesitant the whole way through which i believe 
You know, she couldn't, at the, in the end, she couldn't really, she didn't really have the determination to go through with it, which led to hesitation, which led to Leon killing her, which, by the way, Leon is the most pointless character in this game. Probably made least of an impact, like, he's, which is probably why they made him the murderer, if they, if he was gonna be, you know. But yeah, Leon's maybe the worst character in the game. In terms of being interesting and likable and things like that, he's just really got nothing going on. So it's good that he died very early. Um, but back to Aoi being best girl. I know Aoi was who I, like, is the only person I've seen, like, the maximum dialogue with, like, the star friendship role thing, so maybe that makes me a bit biased, but she was the person that I wanted to do that with the most in the in, to begin with anyway. So, I don't know, I just feel, I feel like there's something there for Makoto and her more than for Makoto and anybody else. But also, don't remember, or don't forget, Aoi tried to kill all of us. She tried to get all of us killed by copping to a murder she didn't commit, because she wanted everybody to die, because she was so devastated that Sakura would kill herself. For But you also have to remember that that was based on false information Monokuma gave her. You know, if she had read the actual suicide note, she wouldn't have, I mean, she would have been devastated, of course, anyway. But she wouldn't have wanted us all to die, especially because that's not what Sakura would have wanted. Sakura wouldn't have wanted you all to, kill, to die. She spent, she died in part to save Aoi, and Aoi was just going to throw that away. Like, you know, it was a momentary lapse of judgment from her. But she's fine now, so, like, we get over that. But in the back of our mind, you know, you kind of, Aoi tried to kill everybody. Um, Chihiro is still best boy. <laughs> like, yeah, he's a dude. I don't view him as a dude still, even though I know that he is. It's not like he's trans, you know, he's just a crossdresser. He has, you know, he, he doesn't want to be a girl, it's just what society, what he thinks society has for him. Like, society's gone on, like, calling him weak and stuff, which is like, maybe if I become a girl, then they won't say those things anymore. So that's what he's thinking. So it's, yeah. It's not like a fetish or anything. He's He does it to just sort of manage his own self-esteem, which is a tragic story. So Chihiro is maybe the best character in the game, in my opinion. In terms of depth and struggles and emotions and just everything, I still feel like Chihiro deserves the place, and Chihiro should still be loved by all, even if you maybe felt betrayed sexually. Um, you know, you still gotta give it up for the stuff that's going on there. Uh, what's after, what's after that? Oh yeah, school mode, as far as school mode goes, I know what school mode is now. Basically, it's like an alternate universe where you get invited to Hope's Peak not to commit murder on each other, but to just, like, build Monokuma backups. Like, build more Monokumas. I don't know. It's kind of, it's like a builder simulator where you, uh, delegate people to do different tasks, and then you get to also dating simulate them because there's, like, free time. And you can, uh, actually go b beyond friends, which you couldn't do in the main game, which is nice. I read a few of those ending dialogues, and people are, like, deigning to be together, like they're talking about their lives together at the end, so that's how that is. Um, yeah. So I'm not gonna do school mode, but I guess if you want to see the maximum conversation levels, uh, you can just look those up online, because I did, and you can find them pretty easily. Um, as far as a couple of character development progressions go, Hifumi starts out re uh, really annoying to me. I don't like him at all in the beginning. He's like all fat and gross and whatnot. And he's also disgusting in terms of like his, you know, he's a deviant, shall we say. And so like that, you know, so you don't want to like him in the beginning. But then his nerdiness kind of wins you over because he quotes a bunch of stuff that I actually recognize. And I was like, oh my God, he just did a Dragon Ball Z quote like this man. What's what's with this man? What are they doing? Why am I starting to like him? And so then I did, which culminates in his death being actually really sad before you know the, the real circumstances behind it. 
and I was like crying over him, over him, and I was doing the dialogue as she was crying, and I was feeling it. So like, though I was also like mildly crying at it, so it was easier for me to get in there. Um, yeah. Conversely, I feel like Mondo gets less likable as the series goes on. He starts off all cool and whatnot. Like I didn't. Well, there's a there's a, some. The first time I saw him, I was like, I'm not gonna like this guy. Like, just based on looks, like, he has a fucking corn on the cob on his face, on his head. And he's, you know, he's obviously a thug, he's a biker gang leader, I'm not gonna like this dude. But then, like, the first time he swore, I w it made me giddy a little bit. I was like, ooh, I didn't know this, it was this kind of game. And then, like, he just kept doing it, and it kept being at the right time. It wasn't overused, in my opinion. Not like Junko at the end, she overused the profanity, in my opinion. But of course she did, because that's one of her personalities. But Ma the way Mondo handled it was very admirable, and it made him more likable. But as the series went on, he started to just become less and less. And when they were delving into his, like, his backstory after he killed Chihiro and whatnot, I was like, I don't really have any sympathy for you. So, I don't know. I wasn't sad about his execution. I wasn't sad about Leon's execution either. I was mildly sad about Celeste's. And... You know, I was not as sad as I should have been about alter egos. Even though technically he didn't die still. Because he saved us when we were going to get executed. But just jumping ahead. What's after, What's next? Talking points. Even if he grows on you, conversely, Mondo Wayne's. My thoughts on Celeste are conflicted. I don't know if I like her or not. Because... In the beginning, she's sort of like this ambivalent creature. Like, she's like, oh, it looks like we're going to stay here forever. And she seems kind of all right with it. But, you know, it's a ruse. She hates being there more than anybody. Which makes me wonder if she hated it there when she was just at school normally with people. I wouldn't think so, because at that point, you know, she, gra she attended Hope's Peak so that she could get the status and monetary um, gains from that so she could go live in her European castle with her vampire butlers, right? So I feel like the mean ends would justify the means for her at that point, but then once you put in the killing game, there's she's got to hate it because it's just keeping her from her dream. And the way she uses Hifumi and like lies to him, like I don't like any of that, but at the same time, like it's kind of diabolical in the way that they set up the whole thing. Like that class trial was the most hectic of all of them. It was, it had me on the edge of my seat for like 20 straight minutes. Just the, had it gust, uh, running back and forth through the building the whole time. And it was like, wow, this is so well done. But then I started to notice a little bit through the like, oh, you know, like, I feel like Celeste is pulling the strings back here. Because she's the one that's saying all the things that are saying. And then, of course, I, we already knew that Hifumi would be her loyal servant based on how he acted when she asked him to bring her tea or milk or whatever. He just became full servant mode. So, I don't know. I'm conflicted on Celeste. I kind of like her. I kind of don't. I was kind of sad when she died. And I was kind of not. Uh, my least favorite character is Toko, for obvious reasons. She's, like, disgusting, and she's, like, sheltered, but at the same... Or she's, like, prude, but at the same time, like, disgusting, which doesn't... It's a weird sort of contradiction. She acts like she's all prude, like, uh, like, oh, uh, you, your boobs, or, stop it, you're... Cover up, like she's talking to Aoi. But then, like, she, you know, turns into, like, Fifty Shades of Grey fan fiction as the, I guess maybe Byakuya like unlocks her sexual side, which I, ugh, I don't want to think about that. But um, yeah, I don't like, I don't care for her at all. Genocide, I like Genocide Jill more than I like Toko and I don't like either of them. So, okay, what's after that? Saika's betrayal and death, already talked about that. Most pointless characters, Leon talked about that. Oh, okay, Yasu. this is the topic now. Yasuhiro could have been the mastermind, but instead he was dumb for the sake of being dumb. I find that to be disappointing to me. I thought I was onto something when I was like, oh, Yasuhiro could be playing dumb, but he's the mastermind the whole time. But then it was Junko, which, you know, I don't dislike the fact that it was Junko. It was, that's also like a very neat twist. I ju it just then, 
devalues Yasuhiro's contribution to the group, in my opinion, and it makes him more of just this pointless, dumb character that is only still alive because he's so dumb, because everybody is like, this guy's not a threat, why would I kill him? I want him on the trial stand complaining the fact, like, not letting the trial move forward because he thinks Kyoko's a ghost for 15 minutes. Like, this guy's a certified idiot, and he's gonna just put a halt to things, and he's gonna make it a lot easier for the Blacken to get away with it. So, that made me not like Yasuhiro. I was holding out hope for Yasuhiro to be the mastermind, because then I would have liked him, because then it's an act and everything's, you know, like, for a purpose, but now it's just purposeless. So I don't like Yasuhiro that much. Um, replaying the chapters with future knowledge is illuminating. When I... Uh, when I started the series, I had already finished chapter one, so I knew what everything had happened. And then going back and watching the intro again, you'll, I noticed that the first three characters they show you in the intro, that they introduce you to, those are the three characters that are involved in the first trial. The first character is Sayaka that they introduce you to, then they show Junko, then they show Leon. And those are all the three of the characters that die. Well, technically Mukuro, but you know. And I was like, oh, that's interesting, and I had to try and keep that to myself. Um, also, relating to that, noticing that Leon was, like, far and away from the group. Like, replaying the chapters when you know what's gonna happen is so worth doing, because you, you, pick, up, you pick up on so many things you didn't pick up on last time. Like, oh, that's an obvious clue that I totally missed, because I knew where to look this time. You know, just in people's behaviors and you sort of analyze them and then that's when you discover just how genius the writing in this game is because they can still fool you but also they give little subtle hints that you can pick up on with you when you have the right knowledge afterwards. Uh, the first execution of the Headmaster sets the ball rolling. I think it's so cool. The very first thing you see when you turn on this game is the Headmaster getting executed, which sets in motion this entire event. It's the very first thing that happens. It to symbolize Dangan or um, Monokuma's takeover of the school. And I think looking back on that, it's so great. And the fact that they allude to it when you fall down in the trash chute and you see the actual rocket that was used for that execution proves that it is in fact canon and did happen in that order. And I just thought that was an also super cool moment. Um, the last talking point I have is, did they all die as soon as they stepped outside? Because I think, you know, they left it as sort of a cliffhanger of like whether or not the world was destroyed. They left that sort of up to you to decide. I think assuredly it was destroyed. I don't think that was lies at all. Especially because Genocide Jill um, you know, seemed to know what was going on and seemed to know that Toko would know what was going on. So I think that proves that it was definitely destroyed. And then it's just like, it's a happy ending, but they're now being thrust into an even more dangerous world. Like, the next 10 seconds of that cutscene could have just been somebody, like a drive-by shooting that just killed all of them. And that is really tough to think about. Because then the it's all it was all for nothing. And that is heavy. That is a heavy emotion. Ah. Uh, but again, you know, some people might be like, oh well, you know, but in the second game they you find out that no, don't tell me none of that, because I'm gonna figure it out by, by myself when I play it. Uh that's that's it. Yeah, you can ask me anything in the comments relating to Danganronpa, the first game specifically. Um, or anything that isn't spoiler f spoiler e. So, you know, please go for that. And I, I'll be on hand to answer them. Like, this is the one video where I'll be like, I'm gonna answer every question if it's a good one and not one I've answered already. So, yeah, you know, that's gonna do it for this, uh, the final thoughts of Danganronpa. Trigger Happy Havoc. So, you know, like, share, and subscribe or whatnot. Leave your comments. If you've got any burning questions, I'll answer them. And I'm actually excited to hear what they are. So, absolutely don't feel like it's an inconvenience, because it ain't. No, I, I'm good for this. So, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.